What's up guys and welcome back to Dowset Reviews Tech. Um, I've changed the channel and the name as you may have seen on my, uh, my post uh, for reasons I explained. Look back in my community if you want to know that, but we'll get on with the video. Today I'm doing a basically, is it possible, is it worth, is it a good idea to game from a NAS? So having like the NAS as your Steam library or Xbox library or whatever. I'm using Steam today because it's just easier to use. And then basically seeing how a NAS performs in terms of using the game if it drops any performance as opposed to obviously running it locally. So you may remember I did this tiny little NAS build which is in the Inwin Chopin Pro. And I've got two times two terabyte integral V-series uh, SATA SSDs in here, so thank you to them for sending that over. Uh, I bought this case myself, um, but I absolutely love this little case, and I thought it was perfect to make a little NAS in um, to basically store some games on, and also I can use this, because it's got a 5600G in it, I can use this as a little gaming machine if I need to, um, by not booting into the true NAS, and just booting straight into Windows on it instead, um, or into emulator or anything like that. Um, so, Today what we're going to do is we're going to test it, um, well I've already done the testing on the NAS, we're going to do some testing on the local files, excuse the fan kicking up in the background. Um, so we're going to basically compare the results of uh, FPS um, average and minimum uh, and obviously I'm, going to, and I'm also going to show you some load, loading times as well because that obviously is going to be a factor for some people they might not want to do it if it's going to slow down them getting into their games. So first of all, um, basically what I'm going to do three different tests uh, to give it a little bit of variety and just to make it simpler and easier for me to do the video um, and it'll give you a good idea of how well it, how, it, how it goes. So we've got two games, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yes it's a bit of an older game but it's uh, quite a CPU intensive game um, and obviously it'll give you a sort of idea of how older games will run. Uh, then we've got Dying Light 2, um, which is obviously a, a much newer game and a lot more demanding, so we'll see how that goes as well. And then I'm going to do Time Spy as well from 3D Mark um, to basically give you a sort of an overall benchmarking result and like I say I'll do loading times for all of those and we'll be testing at 1080p um, highest settings on all of these 1080p 1440p and also ultra wide 5120 by 1440 just because that's the monitor I've got and it gets me close to 4k to give you an idea of how it perform at 4k um, so let's get in with the results I'll show you basically how it performed on each and then I'll talk about it at the end and uh, we'll we'll discuss how how well it goes Right, so we just finished our final test on uh, Time Spy 3D Mark, um, just to basically this is the last of the local testing done. Um, so all the testing is completed now. So I've got my notebook, I've got everything down of how it performed, and surprisingly, um, yeah, I'm well, I'm quite surprised, should I say? Um, so first of all, let's talk about. Well, we'll, do, we'll compare them as we go, um, and you, I'll put them up on the screen as I'm talking, so you don't have to look at my face all the way through this. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, 1080p on the NAS was 234 FPS average and 199 minimum. On local was 233 and 197. So a little bit less, but within margin of error really. Um, so good result there. Uh, 1440p, 227 and 197 on the NAS and 225 and 191 on the local. A little bit bigger difference, but again, probably within margin of error. Um, if I'd done this probably five or six times over, I probably would have got a more sort of clear picture on the overall on both, but due to time, don't really have the, the, the time to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, but it gives you an idea anyway. So, uh, and then on to ultra wide, uh, 167 average and 199 minimum uh, on the NAS, and 167 and 196 on local. So, again, within margin of error. Moving on to Dying Light 2, obviously a more uh, demanding game to run. Uh, on the NAS, 179 frames and 129 low on 1080p, uh, compared to 177 and 124. Again, the locals came out lower, but again, I'd say within margin of error. Uh, 1440p, 157 and 109 compared to local of 151 and 113, so the lows were higher that time, but it was still on average lower. Uh, again, within margin of error probably, even though it's quite yeah, it's a six frames difference. Yeah, pretty much within margin of error. The, the, the lows show that sort of as well. Uh, and then on to ultra wide, uh, 96 and 73 on the NAS, and 93 and 74 on the local. Again, the local coming in lower on the average. I'm not really sure why, but... Again, it's probably more likely within margin of error. And then overall score on 3D Mark, I didn't bother changing any settings, I just ran it as default, which I think I think it defaults to 1440p. I think that's a standard test. Um, so on the NAS, 
25,966 and on the local 25,941. Uh, I need to add, obviously, I've not mentioned this before, uh, the specs on this are a 7900X CPU and a 7900X TX um, Red Devil GPU with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6200 megatransfers per second just to throw that in there so you, you know what i'm talking about so on um the sort of gaming side of it in terms of the actual performance of the games uh, frames per second there's, there's there's no difference well obviously this is showing that the nas actually performed better um unsure why but it shows there's actually no difference um even though that's coming over a network not a problem at all in terms of performance now where it does show a bit quite a big difference um and i was really surprised at this is on the loading times also bear in mind i'm doing this the nas is connected wired to my router but the pc's connected via wi-fi um so obviously it's not going to be as fast as it could be over over wired so um but that's the only, only way i can do it at the moment but i will this is basically using a NAS wirelessly. Let's just let's go with that. Um, so, loading times. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, I'll do the local first. Uh, 27 seconds to from pressing start, play on the game from Steam to getting into the start of the benchmark. That's how I've done all of these. So 27 seconds between pressing play and loading the benchmark up and it's starting the benchmark. Pretty quick. Uh, on the NAS... 122 seconds so from 27 seconds to just over two minutes um quite a big difference um i think you'll agree um, quite a big difference once it's in the game obviously as you see the performance is fine but it, it takes a while to load dying light 2 uh local 89 seconds from pressing play to the benchmark beginning and when i say beginning i mean it literally starting to render it um not not loading it in once it's started rendering that's when i stop the stopwatch 89 seconds and on the nas 213 seconds which is three minutes and 33 seconds um so yes quite a, again over double um what what it takes on local so a big difference there and then 3d mark times by not as big difference here on the local it was 122 seconds so just over two minutes and on the nas was 135 seconds um so yeah not well that's two minutes 15 um so not that bad at all on that for some reason obviously it's not as much to load i assume um so there we have it um can you game from a nas yeah definitely of course you can um is it a good idea yeah it's not too bad as long as you don't mind waiting for the game to load because it is going to take a lot longer than normal then definitely do it if you want storage elsewhere you want to obviously be obviously you're going to use the nas for something else as well maybe for storing mass data and stuff like that um then yeah i can definitely say it is a, it is doable and it is plausible and it isn't a bad idea at all um like i say you've just got to wait for those loading loading times and that's it really um over wired probably a bit different story i will hopefully do a follow-up to this once i've got my new studio set up uh, which is going to be probably another month or so yet until i get it finalized and everything sorted um as I'm, this is all going to move um so yeah hopefully i'll do be able to do a wired test then and you'll be able to see uh the difference it makes between wired and wireless if any at all i assume it will be a big difference because obviously cable connection is much faster than wireless um so yeah that's it guys uh, thanks for watching um massive thank you to integral or integral integral i believe they're pronounced for sending over the the drives for this and um yeah so this it wasn't sent my in when but um they do help me out so i'll say thank you to him when while i'm here as well um so yeah thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down leave me any comments in the comment section below if you have anything you want to tell me about this or ask me about it then give me a shout or anything at all basically give me a shout and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thanks for watching have a good day and goodbye